All right, this video is going to cover how to travel your ellipses. Um, to travel, travel your ellipses, you'll need uh, your number two graphite pencil, your piece of stock card, which I gave to you, your triangle, dividers, needed eraser is always handy, and I have a piece of sandpaper handy here, which I'll show you how to use later. Um, I use it to sharpen my pencil. So you'll want to refer to your class notes, but just as a reminder, an ellipse, we can think about it having two access bars. Um, this is going to be our minor and our major. And just remember that these help us establish symmetry. So this side is going to be perfectly symmetrical to that side. This will be perfectly symmetrical to that. And this will be perfectly symmetrical, symmetrical to that side. Um, so when we travel our ellipses, we're, it's a method where we're going to plot points that's going to help us draw this ellipse to be just perfect. So I'm going to take my triangle out and I'm going to work on getting these bars. These bars need to have a right angle relationship to each other and also to the picture plane. It takes a little bit of practice to use your triangle. One thing that I think is helpful is to bring your triangle out right to the edge of the paper and just feel it with your hand to make sure that the triangle is flush with the edge of the paper. Now we know it's, it's at a right angle. Beautiful line. So now we have our minor and we have our major. And at this point, it's important to step back and say, what does it look like? Does it actually look like this is the right angle? Or do you need to do it again? So I'm just going to invent some kind of ellipse. It's just from my imagination. With this piece of paper, what we're going to do is we're going to indicate a corner. We'll call it our special corner. I'm making this kind of dark just so it's very visible. I'm going to put this right in the middle on the major line. Where the ellipse ends, I'm going to put a mark. And I'm going to label that M, J for major. I'm going to do the same, but on the minor line. So I'm lining it up right in the middle. And where the ellipse ends, I'm going to put a mark. And I'm going to label it minor. This is where the magic happens. I'm going to put the minor on the major and the major on the minor. And right at the corner, we're going to put a little dot. I'm perhaps going a little bit darker than I would in, in real life, so you can see me push down a little bit harder. Um, but that's again so you can, it's more visible on the, the video. So as I rotate the paper, I'm always lining up the minor and the major. The minor goes on the major, the major goes on the minor. Minor on the major, major on the minor. Minor on the major, major on the minor. The more dots you put down, the more accurate your ellipse is going to be. And there are certain areas of the ellipse that are more challenging to draw. And that's, that's this area right here and that region over there. So I like to put a lot of dots down there just to give myself that extra little help to get the ellipse just, just right. So again, minor on the major, major on the minor. So I've taken care of one quadrant and I can move on to this one and you'll see me develop it here and and this quadrant as well. So always minor on the major, major on the minor. Even if we've switched quadrants, the same rules apply. Minor on the major, major on the minor.
Moving on to this quadrant, minor on the major, major on the minor. Moving on to the last quadrant, minor on the major, major on the minor, and I'm putting a dot. Not a good one, but I'm not going to freak out and keep calm. Minor on the major, major on the minor. So you can see, like, it's almost like magical. Um, the dots seem to create um, an elliptical shape, so you're not going to have to struggle to make the slide perfectly symmetrical to that slide. The dots are going to help you create that perfect line. Don't, don't freak out when things like this happen. Um, sometimes you can even notice that you might have some dots that just seem like they're rebels that kind of go away from the general uh, stream or direction of the other dots. You just have to use your brain and ignore those. So what we're going to do now is we're going to connect the dots. As you guys can notice, we have our um, 2B pencil here and it's sharpened just the way I like you guys to have it sharpened for your gesture drawings. But at this point, we want to have it sharpened. We want a fine point. And there's two ways you can go about doing that. I mentioned um, this piece of sandpaper. You can also use your pencil sharpener and I can show you that in class. So when sharpening this, I'm just lightly rubbing it against the sandpaper. And you can see that I'm making this turning motion with my hand. And that's going to keep this, it's going to form the point. All right, that, that's, that's awesome. I did a great job. So what I'm going to do now is create a line connecting the dots. Um, of course, we can come in and, and do something like, like this. And if you're able to do this on, on the first go, that, that's fine. Um, Sometimes it takes me a few attempts to get a beautiful, smooth line. You can see here how it's a little bit hairy. So, I'm not going to freak out about it, but I have my kneaded eraser in my hand. And I'm just going to erase it lightly so I can still see um, the dots. I can even still see kind of the line that I, I erased. It's just very faint. And I'm going to give it another, um, another attempt. It's not hairy, but I don't like how it gets all thick there for no apparent reason. So I'm just going to erase this area and I'm going to do it again. Then I can kind of cheat a little bit if the line is uneven. I can use my kneaded eraser to just, and I'm making this, um, this shape with my kneaded eraser. I'm forming it into this kind of rounded um, square-like shape. I'm going to use that to just smooth out the line a little bit here and there. I'm patient with myself. Um, if I have to do it six, seven, eight, thirteen times, maybe not thirteen, that's so unlucky. I'll do fourteen then. Here's an example of a dot that I'm ignoring because it doesn't seem to follow the path of the other dots. I flip my board horizontally and um, I'm right-handed. For whatever reason, it's easier for me to draw the curves downwards. So over here, to finish this side, I'm going to draw my curve with a downward stroke. I'm going to flip my paper. I'm just going to see what it feels like. If, if I feel like I can do it well this way, um, just continue. If I feel like I need to again flip my paper, I'll do that. So I flip my paper just again to get a better angle where it feels comfortable drawing down. Smoothing out the line. So um, we have a sample here of a finished ellipse and I've tried to make it symmetrical on all quadrants and you can notice a nice even um, slow curve towards the, what I call the corners of the ellipse. 
I hope that you'll use this video um, to practice your traveling at home. I know in class it can be difficult to grasp this on the first day.